Netizens is a documentary about women and the type of online harassment sometimes called revenge porn and the devastating toll that it can take on its victims. I can't even go outside and show my face to the world anymore. I can't go to school, I can't go to work because somebody has already seen me in the way that I don't want to be seen. Every time I give out my name, I know that I'm about to be judged. So this is something that comes through the contact form on my website. These are tweets threatening a convention that I was at. This word legitimate So threat. the film premiered at the Tribeca Film Festival. Joining us right now is Cynthia Lowen. She is the director of this documentary. Nice to have you Welcome. here. Thank you so much for having me. So what prompted you to look into this? I was hearing more and more about these really violent attacks going on against women online. You know, death threats, posting women's addresses, um, saying we're going to come and, and kill you. These were a lot of targeted attacks against women who were in the gaming industry. That was in the fall of 2014. So they were just, oh. you know, participating in and doing all these fun video yeah, games. Yeah, they were, And they were just being targeted for no reason other than they... Essentially being women in the gaming industry. Who should not be in the gaming industry. Right. Mm -hmm. It was like, you don't belong here. A boys this club. Is not your, mm -hmm. This is not your world. So... I was starting to see this and what was happening was that women were being forced from their homes by these threats and there was really no recourse from law enforcement or the tech companies. The response from police was essentially turn off your computer, change your password. So that was where this film started. I thought there's mm. something going on here that is really needs to be looked at. This is violence that needs to be taken really seriously. And once I started looking into this film and working with the three main women in the film, what I discovered is it's violent threats, it's revenge porn, it's impersonation, it's digital stalking, it's people putting up websites about you that you can't get down. And it's life-changing, right? Yes. And it can happen to anyone, right? I mean, that's the bottom line. If it's not like these women sent out pictures of themselves in racy attire or anything like that. It can be faked, it can happen to you. Yeah, it can happen to men, it can happen to women, it can happen to you even if you've never taken or shared an intimate image of yourself, now that you have these things called deep fakes, where it's easy to superimpose your face onto an explicit image, send it out, and it always goes to your family, your employer, your colleagues, your Facebook friends, and you know. So relationships change with friends, jobs, yeah. they sometimes no longer have a job, Absolutely. You're constantly monitoring your name every time you, as, as one of the ladies said, every time she mentions her name, she knows someone's going to look it up. Exactly. So how did, how did it change their lives and what kind of recourse? So the women who I followed each really took on this injustice in their own unique ways. One of the main women in the film is Carrie Goldberg. And she has started a victim's rights law firm out of Brooklyn. She has just become a real powerhouse. She just had a book come out called Nobody's Victim, which is about her uh, starting her law firm and taking on these big cases. So she's taking on tech companies with the law. Um, Anita Sarkeesian, who is a feminist game critic, who's one of the women targeted in what was called Gamergate attacks, she has just continued to be out there to make her work. And she's really an example of someone who just every time they put work out there, it gets just bombarded. But she's keeping doing her work because she's such a role model for young women and girls. And then Tina Riney, who's the third woman in the film, who had her reputation just utterly demolished by mm -hmm. all of these websites. She had worked in the finance industry. She was on Wall Street. She was a successful commodities trader. And once these websites came out, she couldn't get a job for years. Wow. And so what she did was she took her own story back and courageously tells the own, her own story of her history in the film to take her identity back. All right, back. so we have a little, uh, a little <laughs> bit more on your film right now. Let's take a look. I wrote to Google and said, this is abuse. You have to take this down. Please take this down. They won't do it. Every time I give out my name, I know that I'm about to be judged. It's sort of not even, will it come? It's when will it come? Because I know eventually they're going to Google me and they're going to see what's there and then they're going to judge me. Private information, non-newsworthy. I am not a public figure. This was not what the First Amendment was about. 
It's just so, what you were saying. It yeah. can happen to anyone. So where can we see this? So it will be playing tonight at the AMC Empire 25 on 42nd between 7th and 8th, 7.30 p.m. We will be having a panel. I will be there. We'll have a great group of people talking about the film, talking about the issues, taking it a step further to, you know, what can we all be doing to make our online communities more inclusive, safer, and protect our privacy. Well, so. congratulations on this mm -hmm. documentary. Thank you. That's important. Thank, Thank you. you. Nice to have you on, Cynthia. Thanks so much.